Welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida. In part one, I departed eastbound at dawn from my home base of San Marcos, Texas, and landed in Daytona eight hours later to begin a major project on Skyhawk 80991. This is the following morning. The crew at Daytona Aircraft Services is going to give the airplane one last engine run before pulling it into the back of the avionics hangar to take it from this to this by the end of the day. Welcome to part two. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor who loves the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I make it my mission to promote safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to Climb Into the Cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. At 0991 New Orleans Square, square to the uh, Foley Airport via as Bob on departure, maintain 2,000 feet. Technicians warmed up the engine and pulled the plane into the back of the avionics hangar where it's going to reside for the next two months. In addition to the major avionics retrofit, Daytona Aircraft Services is also going to give this bird the most thorough annual inspection it's probably ever had. With the airplane now tucked into the back of the avionics hangar with a warmed up engine, it's time to pull the cowlings off, drain the oil, and get this process started. This is the rare moment you see me turning a wrench. All that we knew was there was a Skyhawk coming, you know, an older 172 that was going to get basically almost everything that Garmin makes, which is we've done in other airplanes before, so it wasn't anything that we weren't prepared for or ready for. I was excited to see the condition of your airplane because we get, it's a mixed bag, you know, you can get a 2000s airplane that's junk or you can get a, like, I think we had like a 46 150 that was in great shape. The crew tackled the task of decaling the engine and removing every inspection panel from this plane. And after a quick glance at the current avionics situation, it was time to start systematically removing the interior and the entire instrument panel. By five o'clock in the afternoon, the inside of the airplane was completely unrecognizable and everyone called it a day and went home. It's now day two for 80991 at Daytona Aircraft Services. And today is really gonna be Dean's day to carefully trace every single wire. This is not just a hack job where they go in with loppers and chop and remove all wires. Dean is not gonna cut a single wire out until he knows exactly what it came from and where it goes to. From there, he'll sort out the wires that need to be labeled and set aside and which wires need to be snipped and removed. So what's your next step? I'll probably give this a slide so we can look at the panel and then see what the differences are, how we can make it look modern and clean. While Dean takes his uninterrupted time to meticulously step through all the existing wiring, I'm gonna head upstairs to the panel room with Sylvester, or as everyone at the shop calls him, Sly. And up there, we're gonna start the process that I'm probably most excited about, mainly because it will directly affect how I'll be interacting with the airplane from now on, designing the new instrument panel. Uh, after several panels that I've made over the years, realized that no airplane is the same. It doesn't matter. They're similar to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but there's very fine things that can throw off an existing design completely off. This is from another 172. This one, we, we try to get the whole glare shield and then it curves up with the glare shield and then there's this little notch that you've probably seen on your glare right. shield that comes down. It really makes a difference as to how much labor we put into a panel. If we have to hack stuff off, or shave something off. And most of the times it takes us more than one plastic piece to nail it. Okay. Yes, he said it usually takes more than one piece of plastic. Sly will first design the profile of the panel in CAD, which is just the general outline of a pre-existing drawing in their database for a similar year Skyhawk. And he cuts that CAD file out of clear plastic on the CNC router for a trial fit. They basically keep cutting new plastic pieces as many times as they need until the design is laid out and fits everything in the airplane perfectly. Then they'll cut our final panel out of 90 thousandths aluminum using that final CAD design. I sat at the desk with Sly as we took this drawing from another Skyhawk to this. 
8091's new panel is going to accommodate dual 10-inch Garmin G3X touchscreens, a backup G5 on the left, and enough room in the center stack for a GTN 750XI navigator with a remote Garmin audio panel, a GNC 255 radio, a GTX 345 transponder, and a Garmin GFC 500 two-axis autopilot with auto trim. The factory radio stack is oriented about four inches to the right of center because the legacy instruments that needed to be in front of the pilot in 1976 took up most of the panel, but because of the two 10-inch screens being installed making the panel more compact and symmetrical, Sly is going to center the stack and center both G3X screens over the yokes. The fact that the actual avionic stack structure is going to be not only replaced but changing locations, there's going to be a fair bit of engineering and additional man hours involved in the design and construction of this panel. It's not just going to be purely cosmetic and making it look good. This thing has to be stout, strong, and reliable as well. This is where the true craftsmanship and expertise from these technicians comes in. Some more little things we're doing to this plane includes moving some electrical switches to a more logical location, adding Garmin GSB-15 USB power units, a 406 megahertz ELT with a remote panel switch, a Guardian carbon monoxide detector, and Garmin's brand new Smart Glide switch. We're also incorporating camera mounts and power units from Flight Flicks into the wings and cabin to make my job filming flights a lot less complicated when it comes to mounting and powering cameras. And we'll cover the install of all of this stuff in a little bit. Now that we know what equipment we want to install and roughly where we want it to go, it's time to cut this first profile out of plastic and see how it fits. Sly marked where the profile needs to be modified to fit, and we left it at that for the end of day two. Day three begins in the panel room cutting version two on the CNC router, but this time we split the panel into two main pieces on either side of the stack. And after checking the fit of that new plastic, Joey broke out the saw and cut away what we no longer need from the airplane's original panel structure. And that includes the factory avionics rails, which had been drilled into so many times over the 46 years of avionics modifications to this airplane. So it was time for those rails to go in the trash anyway. That's yet another benefit of doing this entire gut job on the airplane, not just swapping stuff out, we're actually going in and replacing everything and effectively starting from scratch. Otherwise, if we were just swapping some stuff out, keeping the existing avionics rails, we would be drilling more holes into Swiss cheese and further compromising the structure. So it's very refreshing to see all of this old stuff completely coming out of the airplane and replacing it with brand new stuff. Daytona Aircraft Services doesn't have a full CAD drawing of a legacy Cessna lower panel, so we pulled the plastic overlay off of 8099 and it miraculously stayed in one piece. Normally these brittle panels come off in crumbled pieces. Sly swapped the router head for a tiny probe switch that will basically be able to feel and scan the edges of the panel and create a drawing from the profile. Basically, this probe finds outside and inside edges with guidance from the user, and it creates a digital two-dimensional drawing from all of those found edges. Once this lower panel is drawn in CAD, we can now lean heavily into design and refinement of these panels. That means hours of back and forth between Sly and myself at the computer about where we want certain stuff to be on the panel. While that's going on, the rest of the crew is working away at the airplane, making as much progress on wiring and installation of other parts before the final panel goes in. After many hours at the desk refining the designs with Sly, we begin day four with a fresh sheet of plastic to cut all pieces to trial fit in the airplane together for the first time. October of 2019, that was my first panel. 
It's a 172M. Two, three years later, I've knocked out, I wanna say 27 panels by now. All satisfied customers as far as uh, my knowledge goes. We, we have a great team, we have a great team, really. Two guys that do a lot of the wiring. We're in constant communication with each other because you have to, you have to know that the guys who are doing the engineering, they have to be aware of how, of how the panel's gonna be laid out, how long the harness has to be, and the customer has to be on board with the design because sometimes structure is a limiting factor. You can call it the face value of the, of the end product because that's what the panel is. It's the presentation, you know, it's a presentation of all the work coming together. Obviously, there's a lot more in the background, but it all comes down to what the pilot sees. And what I'm seeing so far is absolutely beautiful. I have to admit, I got quite a bit of anxiety after day one. Seeing an airplane that you're so familiar with be gutted down to the aft side of the firewall gave me an overwhelming feeling of what have we done? But I know good and well the experts here at Daytona Aircraft Services are gonna take their time to do this project right. And this airplane is gonna be far better and safer than it was on the trip out here. In the next episode, we proceed with cutting the final panel design out of aluminum, then it's off to powder coat and laser engraving. I'm also going to do some flying with Peter, who's a very accomplished test pilot and flight instructor, and we're going to go up in the company RV-7A with a souped-up IO360 and almost the exact same avionics layout that the Skyhawk will have. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on part three. And follow Aviation 101 Films on Instagram so you can keep up with the daily updates of this panel project. Normally I say fly safe at the end of these closing voiceovers, but since we're diving into avionics and maintenance in the series, I guess I should say wrench safe. Wear eye and ear protection, I suppose. Whatever you're doing, you know the drill. Stay happy, healthy, current, and proficient. And we'll see you in part three right here at Daytona Aircraft Services. Mm -hmm.